presenting the adventures of Jungle Jim. Last week, Jungle Jim discovered that both he and Mr. Cooper came from the same locality back in the state. And while they were talking over old times, word came that Shanghai Lil had been rescued from the place the Purple Triangle Avengers had imprisoned her. Jim then quickly left to see Shanghai Lil off on her new assignment. Later, as Jim told Colo about his adventure in the jockey club when he rescued a little cockney named Hawkins from a bullying waiter, there was a knock at the door and the old man himself appeared to thank Jim. As Hawkins started to tell his story, General Fu Young Sen arrived with the news that his Purple Triangle prisoners, Sergei and Anna, had escaped and that Jungle Jim's life was in danger. The thrilling adventures of Jungle Jim are pictured each Sunday in the Comic Weekly, the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure. The Comic Weekly, each page printed in full colors, is distributed everywhere as an integral part of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. And now we continue our story. General Fu Young Sen and Hawkins are amazed at the cool way in which Jungle Jim receives the information that his life is in danger. Mr. Bradley, perhaps you did not quite understand. The Purple Triangle prisoners killed their guards and escaped. They are armed, and your life is in danger. I heard you the first time, General Fu Young Sen. Thanks for the warning. Blimey, Governor, you're a cool one. Ain't you going to do anything about this? What is there to do but wait? Well, now, uh, I don't know rightly, but blessed if I'd stand here calmly rolling a gospel. When those purple triangle assassins make their first move, I'll be ready for them. Very glad to hear that, Mr. Bradley. I shall be happy to put a detachment of my national army as a guard around the hotel for you. Well, that's mighty good of you, General. But I think I shall be able to take care of myself. Bully for you, Governor. I ain't as young as I once was, sir. But hand me a bit of something to hang on to with a weapon, and I'll roll up my sleeves and wade into the skirmish with you. Ah, <laughs> thanks, Hawkins. If the enemy attacks during your visit, I may take you up on that. Right. If there is nothing I can do, Mr. Bradley, I shall return to direct the search for the escaped prisoners. Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye, General, and thanks again for the warning. Be careful. Colo, you go down to the lobby. If you hear of anyone inquiring for me, you know what to do. Yes, it's one. Colo, go. Sorry for all the interruptions, Hawkins. You uh, mentioned your son. Is he dead? Ronald dead? No, Governor, he ain't dead. At least what I don't think he is. Blimey if I don't wish he was somehow. Why? Has he mistreated you? Bless you. No, Governor. Not him. Not my Ronald. He was as fine an upstanding lad as ever through the breath of life. Well, then, why do you wish he were dead? He'd be better off, sir. I don't get it, Hawkins. Well, you see, Governor, I'll start at the beginning. Twenty-five years ago, when Ronald was but a little nipper, I comes home one night from a hard day's work, leaving me cab standing at the front door. Hello, Kate. That you, Peter? That's me right enough. I like that, I do. Who else was you expecting, old girl? Well, rally now. I did have a feeling the king would be a dropping in for tea. Oh, oh, oh. The king, eh? That's a good one. You must be feeling better tonight, Kate, eh? Well, I, I'm glad you're home, Peter. Well, I'm glad to be home myself, me duck. I hurried old Jenny along thirteen to the dozen so as to make it as fast as I could. Did you have a good day? Oh, fairish. Where's the little nipper? Here I am, Father. Ah. I was getting Mother some tea. I hope it isn't too hot, Mother. Thank you, Ronald. I don't think it is. Now, I'll run and fetch your father another cup. All right. Here, off him now. I've got to put old Jenny away for the night. I'll have me tea when I come in, Ronnie, my boy. You stay there with your mother. Are you feeling better, Mother? Yes, son. Oh, that's good. I don't like to see you sick. Things are never the same. Ain't they, Ronnie? No, Mother. Oh, Mother, you suppose you're going to be sick very much longer? No, not much longer. Oh, that's good, Mother. You'll soon be a big boy, Ronnie. Oh, why can't I be a big boy right now, Mother? Oh, oh you will be someday. Oh, someday. Everything nice is going to happen someday. 
Why can't it happen right now? Why can't I go and see the world? Shouldn't you like to go away and leave your mother? Oh, Mother. I... I should like to leave you alone. And your father. Leave what? Why, are you going away, Mother? Yes. Where? Far away. Does Father know? No. No, I don't think he does. And I don't want you to say anything to him about it. That'll be our secret, eh, Ronnie? I shan't tell him, Mother. Oh, it's... It's getting awfully stuffy in here, ain't it? Open the window. Why, the window is open, Mother. I'll open it some more. Oh, that's better. My Mother, you must be awfully warm. The forehead's all wet. I oh, know. Okay, let me wipe it off. Then. No, don't bother, dear. Don't bother. Now then. Oh, that's full of tea you were talking about. I'll get it, Father. You look tired, Peter. Well, I am a bit, dear. You know, it's a funny thing, Kate. Sitting up there makes a man tired of and working his head off. <laughs> My back sort of gets cramped up there on the box. Oh, Here's yes. a key, Father. Thank you, Ronald, my boy. Oh, I say, now look at the hour. It's your bedtime, ain't it? Oh, I guess so. Come. Come and kiss me good night, son. And then run off. Good night, Mother. Goodbye, son. Goodbye. I say, Kate. Peter, I'm going to be all right. Oh, Kate, I say, old girl, how could I be so blind? What can I do for you? Just stay with me, Peter. That's all. Blimey, old girl. Are you sure there ain't anything I can do for you? Here, let me run up a chair. No, no, no. There's nothing to be done. But promise me. Promise me you'll take good care of Ronald. Oh, okay. Kate, you can't leave it like this. You can't, you can't. My time's come. And I'm tired. So tired, Peter. Promise me you'll take good care of Ronnie. You know as I will, Kate. I swear, you'll have all the chances in life as old man ain't never had. I'll be both father and mother to him. Peter. Peter. Kate. Kate. You can't leave me like this. You can't. Kate, old girl. Tough luck, Hawkins. And so you had to raise your son alone? Yes, sir. I kept the promise to Kate, and I was both father and mother to a little nipper, and a fine upstanding lad that ever drew the better light. <laughs> he sounds like it. Well, Governor, I worked hard, and I saved every blooming penny I could. And when he was 18, I sent him to Oxford University. You must have been proud of him. Yes! <laughs> that I was, Governor. There never was greater love between father and son than between me and him. The happiest day of my life, sir, was when I see him get his degree. Him, a doctor of medicine. <laughs> and me, a London cab driver, making it possible. Good for you, Hawkins. But uh, there's something I don't understand, Hawkins. Why do you wish your son were dead? Well, I... I was just coming to that, sir. Hawkins. Listen. Hey, what's up, sir? I thought I heard something. Like a window being raised in the bedroom. No, I didn't hear nothing, sir. Who's there? I guess I must have been imagining things. Well, I'm not imagining that knock at the door. Well, I'll go and see who it is for you, Governor. No, wait, Hawkins. Whoever it is has managed to get past Colo down in the lobby. We're not opening that door until we're ready for our visitor. Let me get my gun. Now you can open the door, Hawkins. Right there, sir. But as you open it, get behind it out of range. I will that, sir. Old Peter Hawkins knows how to play Jack the Nimble. Here we go, sir. I've got you covered, whoever you are. Oh, you certainly have, Jim. What? Really, the real? Well, this is a surprise. <laughs> it's okay, Hawkins. Right out, sir. You can come out from behind that door and shut it now. Well, I've only been gone a short time, but is this the latest fad in how to welcome visitors? It is, Lil, when you're not sure that your visitors won't come in shooting. <laughs> oh, Lil, this is Peter Hawkins, Mr. Vreel. How do you do? My pleasure, dear. Well, when not you get back to town, Lil? I've come straight from the train, Jim. I haven't even been to my hotel. I've got lots to tell you. Oh, but first... May I wash up and get some of the grime from what used to be considered a not-bad-looking face? Why, sure. You can wash up in there. Oh, thank you. Oh, where are your things? The taxi downstairs, waiting for me. Hawkins, run down and get them and dismiss the taxi, will you? Here's right. some money. Right, sir. And on your way back, ask Cole if he's seen any sign of the new enemy. Right, sir, Governor. Oh, dear me, oh, 
home where the buffalo roam, where the deer and the antelope play, where seldom is... Oh, I find your own jungle, Jim. Sergey, why you? Stand where you are. I shall hate to kill you so soon. Yes, it is Sergei. You thought you were smart, you and that fool of a general. But iron bars could not keep me from avenging the purple triangle cause. Well, if you're going to make a speech, do you mind if I sit down? Sit down, if you wish. It shall not be for long. All right. No, not in that big chair. Why? You may have a pistol hidden in the upholstery. Take the straight chair. Okay. Do you mind if I take this one over here? I hate to face the light. You will not be facing the light long. And if anyone tries to come into this room, I'll kill them as they open the door. What are you going to do with me? Ah, you will see. Perhaps I should paint a picture of what lies in store for you. From here, I'm going to take you where we had Shanghai Lil. They will never dream we would use the same place for you. And when we get there... Oh, good work, Lil. I was scared to death he'd hear the curtain on the rod and turn and see you. You have no idea, Jim, how much satisfaction has given me to crack this little boy's cranium. Uh, we'd better get him tied up before he comes to. I'll use my belt. And I'll gag him with my sword. Right, come on, let's get him. Yeah, get his hands sure. behind his back there. Yeah. Uh, get that one hand. That's I got it. him. All right, there. Here's the ladies, ladies, governor. Hello, hello, hello. What do I be missing? Who's this bloke? Uh, this is one of my would-be assassins. The only reason I'm still here is that he stopped to make a speech. Well, I didn't meet him in the altar. How'd he get in here? Through the window of the bedroom. I was right when I said I thought I heard a window being raised in there. Strike me blind, but you've got ears like a bloodhound, said. I never heard a squeak. Well, what's to be done? Shall I call up the police? Not just yet, Hawkins. Why not? Well, if a bloke came to do me in, I'd have the bobbies on him in half a bow. Well, there's no hurry. We've got him tied, and with me covering him with his own gun, I don't think he'll get away this time. You know, there's only one tiny disappointment to this little scene of triumph, Jim. Well, what's that, Lil? I wish his girlfriend had come along with him. I'd like to meet her face to face uh, without her having a gun in her hand. Well, don't give up hope of that coming true yet, Lil. Well, what do you mean, Jim? General Fu Young Sen told me of these two Avengers, of the Purple Triangle Corps, and he told me that they escaped and were gunning for me. Now, evidently, they decided not to waste two stones on one bird. And Sergey here came to try his luck first. Then this Anna. Anna will wait a certain length of time. And when Sergey fails to appear, she'll come here herself. And when she does, Jim, just leave her to me. <laughs> What is the mystery of old man Hawkins' son, and how will it affect the future plans of Jungle Jim? The adventures you have just heard dramatized will be shown in full-color action pictures in the Comic Weekly. The big Comic Weekly, distributed with your Hearst Sunday newspaper everywhere. In the world's greatest supplement of humor and adventure, the Comic Weekly, you will find all the famous characters who live in the world of color pictures. There's the little king, bringing up father, the cat's Yammer kid, Toots and Casper, Barney Google. Flash Gordon, and many, many others. See all these famous characters in your copy of next Sunday's Comic Weekly, and don't forget our date next week, same time, same station, for a continuation of the adventures of Jungle Jim. <laughs>